just give us your impression of, of the Republic of Ireland game against Hungary last night. Nil-nil, of course. Um, another draw, unbeaten. What did you think of it? I mean, it's a typical Irish performance. What Trapattoni's done is, is developed his squad of players that are very difficult to beat. It's unbeaten in 14. It's 11 clean sheets. Uh, in that run of games and uh, yeah, a very well organised performance in difficult conditions last night. Uh, Trapp has only said that barring any injuries, he said before the game last night that this team that he played last night will be the team he'll start with against Croatia. Do you think he'll stick with that? There's nothing to suggest he'll change I, I his mind? I think he will, Jules. I don't think there's any, um, any problems, any surprises in this team whatsoever. Uh, if we look at the defence, you've got the wily campaigners in, in in Richard Dunn, who done extremely well last night, coming back from from uh, an injury, I thought John O'Shea was probably the only person in that back four that looked a little bit rusty, which is understandable because of his lack of games. Um, but there's absolutely no surprises there whatsoever. We can move into midfield. Again, we've got great experience with Damien Duff. I think Keith Andrews has been doing well, supplementing his, his club form with goals. Glenn Whelan last night uh, done very well playing in front of the back four, mopping things up. And Aidan McGeady was his usual threat down wide on the ring, wing. And uh, up front, talisman, Robbie Keane. Um, so many goals for Ireland. Again, another, another captain's performance. And then Kevin Doyle, whose who's aerial ability last night uh, was a big part of Ireland's play. Something they've worked on uh, over the last few games as well. Um, which we'll look at again in the tactics going forward. So no surprises in that team, other than Trapattoni saying it, announcing it a week before the tournament starts. What do you make of that? Does that give Croatia an advantage? I'm not sure, really. You know, I think there was, as I said, I'm not repeating it, but no surprises whatsoever. He's tried and tr trusted formula. No reason to change it. We thought that we might. So we, we saw James McLean against Bosnia, uh, but no, this is his starting eleven for sure. Um, he knows them, he trusts them. I think most of the lads have been together for about two and a half weeks already. So he's just drilling them, drilling them, and they know their jobs. That's why they're hard to beat. And we didn't have a look at him, but the fitness of Shea given the fact that he's looking like he'll be fine for the opening game, that's so important, isn't it, yeah, Phil? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last night he was tested quite a bit. Um, and he, he came through with flying colours, had quite a few saves to make. Um, and I thought Shea done well. So, yeah, full squad to pick from, everyone's fit. Um, yeah, it, it looks good. Tactically, what do we learn from last night that you think you'll now take into the tournament? Well, it'd be interesting. To, um, what they've worked on with um, Keith Andrews is picking the ball up. It, it's, it's an archetypal 4-4-2. But what we'll see here is Keith Andrews tends to pick the ball up from, from the centre-halves. And what he'll try and do is hit a long ball into this corner using Kevin Dawes aerial prowess we'll get a willing runner in Ada McGeady and also Robbie Keane will come in and Duffer will come over to supplement and that's what they've been doing worked well against Bosnia Herzegovina uh, governor uh, and it worked well last night um, so that's uh, about it there's no science behind it really other than utilizing what we've got good aerial presence willing runner up front in Doyle or if it's Shane Long or even if it's Jonathan Walters um, and that's it, hit it and try and not be too fussy, just get into areas where they can hurt teams. And do you see him changing his tactics much from the Croatia game where they kick off against them, against the likes of Spain and Italy? Will he change much between games? I can't see how he will. The only thing I can see him doing when he's playing against better opposition, let's just get rid of uh, the Hungary squad, please. OK, um, we're going to load up what we'll do against the, uh, against the Spanish. Mm. What you'll see is a tighter midfield and we'll see Robbie Keane here drop in let's see let's get the fancy graphics up yeah <laughs> there you go uh, a very very compact area um, because the Spanish particularly like to play their football here they don't use the flanks very much they try and penetrate in through straight down the heart um, and attack the heart defense so Robbie Keane will just sit there let's get that off and what he'll do is he'll just patrol patrol this area up and down protecting his midfield and then if he has to supplement attack he'll just go out I didn't get an A in art at school <laughs> um, yeah so it'd be very compact very hard to beat um, with Robbie King just dropping deep Doyle um, will probably play up front because of his legs uh, to give them an outlet if they win the ball would you say that the way this Ireland team plays and the personnel actually that they're, they're perfectly set up to play that sort of game against an attacking team like Spain 
I think so. You know, the, the, if you look last night, there was a great counter-attack with Aidan McGeady. He fed the ball into Jonathan Waters, who, who had a great shot. I just think that the way Trapattoni organises the Irish boys, they are so hard to break down. You know, I think they've conceded sort of 18 goals in, in 26 internationals. Um, we know about their 11 clean sheets. Um, just hard to, to break down. My big concern is going forward. <laughs> Without Robbie Keane, where do the goals come from? Kevin Doyle hasn't had a particularly good season, uh, although he's got, his ratio is about one in four with Ireland. Shane Long, seven international goals in 25 appearances. His stats look a little bit better. But, um, you know, how are Ireland going to score goals against teams like Croatia, Italy and Spain? Again, we've looked at the long ball. They're set up, basically, and the areas where they're going to get the most most joy, if this works, bear with me, yeah. Oh, is down the flanks. Yeah. We'll try it there again. Yeah. So we've got good, genuine wingers. Aidan McGeady, very good. And also the cover if things aren't going well in James McLean. Young, youthful, no fear whatsoever. He will attack any right back in the world. Duffer, a little bit more wiser, a little bit more wily. Again, this is where Ireland will get most benefit from from their attacking play you'll still you, you'll get Robbie Keane doing his doing his business in the box scoring and again you'll have Doyle in and around those areas again just patrolling being a good target man holding the ball up and just a final word Phil we know they'll be well drilled by Trapezone he won't leave any stone un unturned to such an extent that Aidan McGeady said after the game last night the players are feeling tired is that a concern I think um it's not necessarily. If you look to the conditions, it was a very, very heavy pitch last night, very sodden. Uh, they put in the work in, and it will drain their legs. It will, it will make them heavy legs. So this week, they'll do a lot of recovery, recuperation, massage. I wouldn't be too worried about that. It's just, you know, a, I wouldn't say it's a throwaway comment, but you're getting someone who's just come off after a very draining game, and he's feeling tired. But I think the boys will be five. The adrenaline adrenaline will be pumping uh, with the green army behind them well, I'm sure we can get some shock results and one word will they get out the group unfortunately Jules I don't think so but I don't think they'll disgrace themselves I think there'll be some good performances um, and we'll do ourselves proud